Peterson, Chuck Schultz absent, Cam Gonzalez. Here. Okay, at this time I would like to suspend our regular board meeting for a public hearing. Okay, the public hearing is to discuss the special assessment for a single waste hauler for the Jane Hill subdivision. And um, I, I just want to know, are there any comments, any concerns? At this point, we're just extending the contract um, for another seven years. This one's going to expire next year. Well, well, I have um, received three bids, one from Republic, and Republic has told me that if they get the contract that they will be providing two of the 95-gallon containers, uh, one for recycling and one for garbage, just same as what City of Fenton has. Um, it, that's assuming that you stay with Republic and we I have bids from Duncan and I also have a bid from Dougie's disposal well um, Duncan has three options um, get to Duncan. well first Republic is the the least expensive. It's uh, any of the options that Duncan has. Duncan's least expensive option is twelve eighty a month, and that's for customer owned cans. And it's weekly collection of weekly collection eighteen gallon recycling bins. Weekly collection as well, and then monthly yard waste up to twenty bags. That's the the lowest. And then if you if you go up to $14 a month, they'll provide a 96-gallon cart and an 18-gallon recycling weekly pickup bin. And then for $13.50, they'll provide the 96-gallon carts for recycling and garbage, but they'll pick up every other week the recycling. And that's $13.50. And um, Duncan's is... 1238 is what they're they're giving us as a price. Yes. Would um, Republic recycling be every other week? And I did call because um, one of the residents from your subdivision called today inquiring about having it done every week because he thought City of Benton was being done weekly, but I was informed today that there every other week as well now that they have the large recycling bins with Republic with any of them no no um, it's gonna be let's see I think they all three were a little different <laughs> yeah <laughs> well Duncan it says it is pickup of 20 bags. So, and then Republic. Damn. Republic. No, I, I think it didn't all get copied, but I have Republics right here. Oh, okay. Uh, so there was a cost for for doggies. Yeah. Um, they had yard waste, but they have bags. There's three bags are free, and then additional bags will cost fifty cents per bag. Bi weekly pickup. For doggies. For the yard waste. Yes, for, for doggies. doggies. Well. What was Republic's? Yeah. Republic's. Um, 
It said that yard waste will be collected on an every other week basis from April through November. Um, yard waste must be placed in biodegradable craft paper bags or placed loose in 10 to 35 gallon cans, clearly marked with a yard waste sticker. Uh, yeah, let's see if it says. Yeah. Um, I don't see that they have a limit. Under your old contract with Republic, do you have a limit on the amount of bags, yards? So okay. there is none. So no limit. It doesn't. It doesn't say that in the the bid. Duncan did say twenty. Was was Republic? You said every other week. Mm -hmm. Oh, because Duncan's is seen monthly. Oh, monthly yard the, waste up to 20 bags. Where are you going to store all that <laughs> for a month? Build a house. Yeah. Well, I think regardless of what we do tonight, it should be clarified in the contract so there's no gray area and everybody knows uh, what happens as far as. Yeah. Okay. Yard waste one week and recycle the other week. I would expect it to just continue with the same way we're working now. If we go with Republic, yeah. you're going to have two of them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> get rid of the car. <laughs> you get any bigger, you're going to have to get a license plate for them. <laughs> so you've been happy with Republic, though, so far for the most part? Yes. Okay. Well, they will do that, but uh, but I, I didn't get a price on that. But he's the Gary Hicks is the person I've been dealing with, and he said that because you'll have the 95 gallon um, carts, it, right, right, um, and that's what the city of Fenton has to is every other week, and because one of the the residents thought it was every week, but they've changed it since they provided the, the bigger carts. But I mean, I can, I can get a price on whether you want it done weekly or not, I can get a price. We have to take that. Yeah. It, no. It'll be fine. Okay. So this will be increasing. It actually isn't an increase. Um, with well, I mean, I think it might be um, would be with the other ones. I think I think the, the other ones it would be. Republic yeah, this actually one. decreased their rates, didn't they? It, they did just decrease the rates, I believe, to eleven thirty-two a month, and then this this price of eleven thirty-eight is effective in April of two thousand seventeen. So it's maybe a six cent a month. Yeah. So really, there's not a, a huge difference, and they're going to provide the. The bins at no charge to you. 32, I thought. No, that's for current this now, this year. He's, he told me that if he gets the contract, that he will be bringing the bins out as soon as he's awarded the contract. So I take that as to be sometime in the near future. That I don't know. I would think so. Yeah. The, oh, the small recycling. Probably. Probably they'll want those back then. <laughs> Any other? How do you make the determination? Just based on cost? Or well, <coughs> and, and your input. The, the cost is a factor, and Republic is the, the lowest cost, and uh, that would be my recommendation if. The name is familiar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've pr proven good service from being there before with the subdivision, so. You live in yeah. that sub, don't you? No. No? Mm -mm. no. Well, 
And how often did you say the recycle would be picked up? Every other week. As usual. Yeah, right. But you'll have the large container. Driver, jump out of the truck, go over and, well, that's the way it has been. Now they'll have the that lifting equipment. thing. But, but I, think, I hope they pay these fellows well. <laughs> Regular pickup would be every other week. Regular waste pickup would be every week. The recycling would be every other week. It would be the same as it is now. Right. right. Same as it is now. Same as it is now. Other question over here, Marcy? Comment? Sure. Past experiences with I read that we had a notice about, you know, the flyer that you gave us. They had no details at all, so. Detail. You know, I just wish you guys would put some details on what what we were, possibilities. I guess you have a number of different providers, and you haven't mm -hmm. selected one yet, so perhaps that's the reason why you didn't put it. Right, because we got the bids, and then we want to give you you time to be able to come in and look at the bids if you so choose to. You could put the details of the bids in there. We could have, it's but. Open form. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if I did, if you, if you did that, I would be here. Oh, so. okay. 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 I understand. I just yeah. past experiences from the township. Oh, it's on the website. They're in the board packet on the website. Well, well, maybe we should need to put that in the letter, though, to yeah, review the yeah. website. <laughs> yeah. We could do that. For the hearing record, can we have your name and address, please? Uh, Thomas Peterson. Okay, thank you. And your address? Uh, 13045 Hillsbury Drive. Okay. And, and you, sir? Thomas Sloan, 11351 Manchester Drive. He's my neighbor. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know you could have called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you get that, Terry? I did. Okay. And did did you get everybody else's? My. Nancy, Benzie. Nancy, Benzie. Nancy, Benzie. Thank you. Okay, did you guys have any other okay. comments or questions? All right, well, thank you very much for showing up your comments. Um, this time we'll close the public hearing and we'll move on with the approval of our agenda by so starting our meeting again. It's been support. motion and supported to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Next is approval of the consent agenda. The regular board meeting minutes from April 5th 2016, the treasurer's report, and the clerk's warrants and bills. So moved. Support. It's been motioned and supported to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Next is communications. Items 1 through 4, the Livingston County Sheriff's Report, March 2016, the Revenue and Expenditure Report from March 31st, 2016, Planning Commission approved meeting minutes from March 15th and the Planning Commission meeting synopsis from April 12th, 2016. Support. It's been motioned and supported to receive and place communications one through four on file. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Next is public remarks. There'll be two opportunities for any public comments during the board meeting, and this will be the first opportunity. You have three minutes to say anything if you would like. So, okay, Maureen. I just wanted to make oh. a comment about the proposed employee relations focus group. Uh, in reading these, I think, I think this is a little bit too rigid for kind of what we were thinking of, only because it says that you know, we can only have four meetings in an hour each. Yeah. Want to extend it to an hour and a half or whatever, or, or throw an extra meeting in if we're in the middle of something. And I think we should be. Um, the other thing is I don't like uh, rotating people, especially if we meet quarterly. 
uh, then three months later you're trying to fill in people and if you're trying to limit it to an hour or reasonable I think you're going to spend a lot of time recapping I think you should just have definite if we've already commented and had all the girls write down and vote and they've already voted for myself and Joanne Marcy Marna and David to be on. also sent in their most top issues to do that so um, looks like handbook was number one to kind of get some that just to get it a little bit up to speed nothing major um, to be a concern that we're after major concerns or just clarification and just to make it easier okay anybody else all right, well, thank you. We'll move on with the agenda. We have no unfinished business, so we'll start with new business. Item number one, resolution 160403, approving project details and directing the preparation of the special assessment tax roll for Jane Hill Waste Collection Project. So resolved. Support? <laughs> it's been motioned and supported. It's been motioned and resolved, Actually to, resolved and to approve the <clears throat> project details for the Jane Hill Waste Collection Project. Any further discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mike Cunningham? Yes. Marcy Houston? Yes. Marna Smith? Yes. Cam Gonzalez? Yes. Soren Peterson? Yes. Chuck Schultz absent. David Walker? Yes. Okay. All right, it's been resolved. Next is resolution 160404. It's the filing of the special assessment rule, scheduling the second public hearing, issuing notices, and ratifying previous actions for the Jane Hill waste collection. So resolved. Support. It's been resolved and supported to file a special assessment role for the second public hearing notice for the Jane Hill Waste Collection Project. Any further discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mike Cunningham? Yes. Marcy Husted, yes. Marna Smith? Yes. Cam Gonzalez? Yes. Soren Peterson? Yes. David Walker? Yes. And Chuck Schultz, absent. Okay. That's been resolved. Next is item number three, award of the waste collection contract for the Jane Hill subdivision project. I have a question to ask. Uh, I see apparently the residents that have shown up are pretty happy with uh, Republic. I'm assuming that's what you're doing your, your thing now. Uh, you all seem to be pretty happy with that. It seems to me that they are the least expensive, and money is one of the things we look out for. Sure. And I would definitely like to support this motion because it, it is something yeah. that certainly we're not taking anything away. We are giving something to the to the township and its residents. Yeah. I pay considerably more than that, and I have Republic, by the way, just to point out that. And I don't have, well, I have the uh, recycling, it's an extra $3, and I pay that quarterly. But it's considerably more than what you folks are paying. But I don't belong, I live out in the country, so. You bring up a point, I mean, what's the cap of how much they can charge after next year? Um, it's a seven year contract, right? It, yeah, it says um, it could go up 3% each year. Can no you, more than can we go over the contracts and then that way we can better understand what's what's going on uh, talk about you know the future and the what the current prices are so we make sure that we're making the right decision so with Republic the current price is 12.32 a month and this says pricing for the first year would be 12.38 a unit per month future increases of 3% would be realized for each year after and this price is effective April 1st of 2017 so that is Republic and 
end. Uh, Duncan also says, they say years one and two will be held at the same rate with each additional year of the contract receiving a 3% increase. Uh, it does say that yard waste will be picked up in 33 gallon brown paper craft bags provided. So it looks like they're going to provide yeah, you. And what's the, the rate? Their rate, the lowest rate is 1280, and that's if you own your own um, garbage cans, which most of you probably do because you don't, they haven't been provided well, for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but if they were going to provide the cans for you, you'd be looking at thirteen fifty or fourteen dollars a month, depending on if you did the weekly or the biweekly. Um, and then recycling. there was Dougies. Then there's Dougies, but what was there? A, oh, three percent cap. Okay, yeah, three percent could be increased. I actually have Dougies myself, and they don't recycle. But and they're thirteen fifty a month. But they're providing recycling for those. That's what they said. Hmm. That's what they have said. But um, because I called, because when we signed up for their service, they had recycling, and then they canceled it. And when I called, they said they only do recycling in Tyrone Township for two subdivisions down by Heartland. If they get the contract, they say they will do recycling. Oh. Yeah. But concerns I don't. You know that that's a concern <laughs> and, and to me. Three bags at fifty cents, that's or three okay. bags, three bags free, then fifty cents. That's after. Yard waste, not the recycling yeah. part. Recycling sure. separate from yard but waste. But that, that's just yeah. an included fee on the uh, yeah. on the estimate, is what I was referring to, where Republic didn't. So it kind of sounds like Republic is uh, the way to go with the cans, the recycling, the yard waste, the cap of what was it three percent? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So. It's not like anybody's in the field either, so. yeah. And just so you know, waste management um, opted not to give us a bid. That's so surprising. we didn't have a bid from them. Make a motion that we award the contract to uh, Republic. Support. It's been motioned and supported to award the Jane Hill Waste Collection Contract to Republic Services. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Next is the formation of employee relations focus group. Marcy? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we have some um, employees who want to have a, a basically a subcommittee to work on resolving some issues with our employee handbook so we have proposed an employee relations focus group and we're proposing that that would consist of two employees one trustee and two members of the personnel committee which is the treasurer supervisor or the clerk and that they would meet quarterly beginning May 1st for one year and the meetings would be an hour long and employees are going to provide a list of their top 10 most important issues that they would like to discuss. I would like to mention one thing. Um, the stop gaps as it were uh, where they have two, two employees and rotating employees, I think it's a very good idea because then so you don't have one employee bringing all the complaints or complaining individually. So I think rotating is a good thing. Uh, the other issue I have here is that the reason these things are put on here is that we hope that these things will be solved any issues will be solved by following the handbook by going to the immediate supervisor the immediate supervisor and the employee should be able to resolve 99 and 99 100 percent of these things so to have an additional two or three meetings or meeting uh, additional meetings uh, 
monthly or weekly is really mundane because then we don't need supervisors. Uh, if she has a problem, go to you. If one of the other employees has a problem, go to their immediate supervisor. That's what the, the supervisors are for. That's their role to solve and resolve issues with the employees. At least as a manager, that was my role. And I had a lot of people working for me as a manager, and that's my not as it were, for want of a better word, that I had to have solved the problem before they get to upper management. So you resolve it at this level, then you don't need to be spending time with three or four different people getting three or four different opinions. And historically, when the process has been followed, we've gone through the things and we've made changes. Hence, you know, handbook changes last year. Um, some people weren't happy with the changes, but they were addressed, and that was the outcome of them. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, in this case, had that had happened, we probably wouldn't even be having this discussion. Yeah, but we are, so. Well, I think the, the opportunity has arise that, you know, obviously there might be issues with what's in the handbook. We've been you know, numerous times clarity or not understanding, interpreting it. So I look at this as an opportunity. Um, yes, currently the handbook allows for input, but I think now we're at a point where maybe we can have this temporary focus group. We can hammer out what these issues are and the, the clarity, you know, this get that communication open, work on fairness, but I think we need to look at the perspective. Batson is an employee, and I think as a whole, you know, we want to do this for our residents. Mm -hmm. I think there might be a lot of things in the employee handbook that as a manager of the employees, there might be some things that could be a little more clear in that sense, so that when it comes to having to make a decision as a manager, it's it's black and white and the decisions made and then nobody's feeling like it's unfair or that it wasn't communicated right because it's if we have flexibility there um, I'll give you an example snow days we've given some flexibility in that and so let's say you follow the procedure of the handbook and you've contacted everybody in the am amount of time needed so they don't show up because you're having a snow day but as managers, you feel like these guys have been working hard. We haven't done any employee recognition. Let's pay them for the snow day. Just, you know, it's an, a boost up morale. Well, we have that flexibility now to do that. But maybe we shouldn't have that flexibility because what if the next time comes and we don't give it? People are like, well, that's not fair. You gave it to us the last time. Why wouldn't you give it to us this time? So it's, it, you're already having that gray area to me so if you make it more clear as a manager you can process and make decisions easily and clearly and it seems fair and easily communicated in the handbook for both the employee to read and as the manager of the employees but what it doesn't call for is the unknown variable right. and there have been unknown variables right i think if we start diving into that we're going to make changes that may someone thinks that they're unfair now may find them fair but the people that find them fair may find them unfair right i think we do have a process here and i think it works when it's followed um i don't know if we need to add another layer to the cake like a washington bureaucracy or whatever but i don't know i thought yeah i know i get that but it sounds like we do have issues that there we can't resolve or haven't been able to resolve in the past so I think this is a step forward to try to resolve them I mean I just it is temporary in nature and the idea is to try to focus this to resolve some of those issues to get them behind us one of the issues that I see here is that we have we had someone that was not getting along with somebody so consequently at the moment of vacancy then the move was made and I don't think that going around the system 
Well, the, the process that's laid out in the handbook, I don't think going around it is going to solve anything. <coughs> Again, the problem lies in the individual communication between manager and employee. It's not a matter of, uh, I, don't like, I don't like Marcy, or I don't like Marna, or I don't like Mike. So I'm going to skip that and go to the, uh, to the next step. I, I'm not going to follow that procedure. And because I, I don't like Marcy or I don't like Marlon or Mike, then it, I, in my mind, I legitimize the fact that I can go to the next step. And I think it's wrong. You take away the uh, credibility of the manager, as it were, and that's what these people are here for. We, they're doing a, a job. And if you go up over and above them, then you are definitely uh, legitimizing the, 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 the dog or the tail wagging the dog. And I, I just don't see that. I think that what the, the purpose of, of this focus group is, is really to clarify the employee handbook, not an avenue to take complaints to like if they have if complaints it's a matter of clarifying the the employee handbook it, you, i mean do we need to get a legal somebody legal to, to do this or do we need can we as managers explain this and communicate this to the different employees that's and i, I don't blame the employees i don't blame the managers i'm not blaming anybody i'm just simply it, stating it the says fact it's of i i manage people for 25 years and I went through the same things we're going through right now. And again, it falls down to if we could resolve these issues, then we don't need this step here. Well, and it says right here, the, the purpose of the employee focus group is to allow employees to manage to discuss employee issues and concerns. Employee complaints will not be discussed by this group and employees with complaints will be required to follow the procedure outlined on page four of the employee handbook. Yeah, it's not intended to be a grievance. Committee. Yeah, we don't want it to be a great so, session. I mean, it, we it's, want to hammer it down. It's more than just a handbook that we're we're doing here. Yeah, I no, understand. That. And I, I just want to, you know, make sure that um, also too, we we do have a policy of how we mm -hmm. handle complaints, right. and that this does not and vacate or circumvent that. It doesn't circumvent it that. No, I agree at all. And that has been addressed and clarified. So to make sure everybody was aware that you know this is how it's stated. This is the page number. So in case if it wasn't clear and they didn't understand it's you know management did give that clarification yeah, to staff that you know this is the process to follow and uh, the other thing too is if I don't like a supervisor for whatever reason mm -hmm. I get a new supervisor there's lots of them out there huh. so that's my issue with this you know down bottom line understood so in the spirit of at least getting on the floor so we have a motion so that we can discuss the motion, I will move that we accept the proposed employee relations focus group with one change in it. So you ready to take notes? <laughs> <laughs> yep. With one change and that being that we still allow the, uh, the meeting quarterly and for I, I don't think you need to limit it to an hour, but meeting quarterly or as needed, so that the group can decide if they need, you know, they need something quicker than that to allow some flexibility there. And you don't is need, there? I'm sorry. Go ahead. The, there seems to be. I mean, the rotate. I mean, maybe the rotating would be nice, but I think it's if we're going to have to have two employees and then two members of the personnel committee it's maybe that we should say motion. that was the motion right yeah that was right. okay okay do we have a support for that motion support one point though on this rotation of the employees if you're going to have rotation are they going to both be rotated at the same time or two different people yeah, it's kind of confusing or, mm -hmm. or what and what kind of continuity would we have with that It's like we have two changes to the motion. <laughs> well, we have a motion, we have a changes. Yeah. I think the intent here is to have open communication. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be an issue. 
um, I don't want it or we thought that it would be best to have let everybody that wants to have a voice have a voice and we would rotate the committee the the board members the elected officials as well so that everybody gets a chance to participate um, you know we, we don't have a employee representative so to speak and I know that supposedly a vote was voted on something that hasn't even been approved yet so <laughs> um, you know uh, how about if we had something rotating two employees or mem personnel committee members will be rotating or who are available at the time of the meeting you know, I'm just thinking if you're not available or just so that we're not being have some openness there if you're gone on training or so hmm. it's the same employee can't be at more than two of them that way we get some people to participate as opposed to yeah I'm not just quite as hung up on the rotating side yeah. so I mean yeah so res you know however you want to resolve that I'm I'm perfectly okay with so I guess if you leave it as the rotating, we're not being specific as long as it's two employees are yeah, rotating. I'm fine with that. Yeah, and two members of the personnel committee. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, if it was like Mike and I two times in a row, that's not going to be an issue because that's really not rotating. <laughs> but if no, Marcy no. wasn't available to be at yeah, the no, meeting, that. yeah. And the same with with the uh, employees. If they're right. not available, then they're not available, and then right. you, you got to slide somebody other. Okay. So. All right. So, you so basically to... the conclusion that we came to is we're not really changing anything, right? Okay, that's what I thought. No. Okay. Just clarifying what I the rotating that. Okay. <laughs> I'm good with that. Okay. Any other comments? So you had the motion and the support with the Okay, so um, amount of time. No, he made that in his motion. Yeah, that was in the motion. Okay. That was in the motion yeah. at the time. Okay. So Okay. Yeah. Any other comments? None. All in favor signify by saying aye. Hi. For modification? No, there was no modification. There was no modification. My motion had the initial modification in it, and we didn't change that's that. That's for the modification. I'm sorry, say that again? Okay, that's for the modification. No, we didn't modify anything. Okay. The, mo the motion as presented had the modifications built into it. Right. And that's what I seconded, I thought. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. And then we had a little discussion, and we're back to square one. Let's do a roll call vote on this. Okay. Okay. Soren Peterson? Okay. Dave Walker? Yes. Marcy Husted? Yes. Mike Cunningham? No. Uh, Marna Smith? Yes. Cam Gonzalez? Nay. Okay. okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is surplus from the 2015 2016 financial budget adjustments. Um, one thing that we usually do at the end of uh, every year is we allocate budget surplus money. We're still in the process of determining what that is. We still have outstanding bills. Um, we don't know what they're in. So we la last couple of years we've been allocating a percentage of it. Um, last year we allocated to the building fund. We allocated to the road fund. And we allocated to the revolving fund. Is it three, right? We yes. didn't, I didn't leave one out, did I? Okay, I just want to make sure. So, um, I don't recall what the percentages were, but, um, you know, we, we, we obviously know what condition our roads are in. We obviously uh, got a snapshot of our building from our report that we did. We're still waiting to uh, have our uh, presentation from uh, Nate Gillette on that to go into deep dive into it. And, uh, you know, we always know that revolving fund is a, is a good place to put money. So um, I think last year we did a... I think it was 30, 30, and 40. 30, 30, and 40. Yeah. I, 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 those are good numbers. I'd like to, you know, you know I don't see any issue with putting 40% of budget surplus in roads and 30% in building and 30% in revolving fund. Or, you know, if, if we want to put a little bit more on roads or building, that's fine. But just remember, once you put money into a fund, it's allocated. It's allocated and it cannot be taken out. Now, if we put money in revolving fund, that's kind that's of our, that's our so-called slush fund. That's where we can, well, 
borrow or whatever. I'll call it flexible spending, I suppose. <laughs> Slush has a bad sound to it, so. <laughs> well, it's it's not concrete. <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. So yeah, that that's where we can we have some flexibility. Slush um, fund makes it sound like a guy showed up with a bag in the parking lot. Yeah, so this yeah. sounds better if we say flexible spending. <laughs> Well, I'm not used to that type of lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so we, we, we can go that route, or if anybody has any other suggestions as to what they'd like to do, um, a view let's of talk the about road it. conditions and uh, what we've spent this year, I would like to see us put money towards fixing Denton Hill Road. That's going to take a big chunk. Big chunk. Yeah. It is. We well, have to accumulate a little wealth in order. I to think it's out, just so. the, the uh, forty percent. It's the probably going to for chloride. Yeah, yeah. The the I mean, we do chloride every year. South of White Lake, on the Fenton Road, that's going to take a big chunk. Well, well the, the issue, you know, it's the it, county's responsibility. Though. As aggressive as we've been with that, and as much as we'd like to, there's just no way that we're ever going to be able to keep up with it. By the time we save the fixed end the road, another one's going to go bad. By the time we save this the fixed it's just, it's uh, until true. the state and the county own up to the responsibility. And it, it seems every time I turn around, it's, they're always priding the township for more money. Um, well, this is, this is simple math. If we stopped paying every bill in the township and used 100% of the revenue to fix the roads, you haven't got enough money. No. no. We so, don't have enough. So, so. We don't have enough to do like barely yeah. a couple miles of road yeah so when when, yeah. when the roads caved in on one side and somebody's driving on the other side of the road and you know that's when we yeah. that's when we have to step in questions to see. Um, well I would be comfortable knowing where we've have put into the budget for road repairs for this budget year I'm comfortable with putting 40% for whatever surplus number we end up with to boost the road fund back up because we really use road funding for chloride. That's a township-wide service to all our residents. And then the remaining, the 30 to building, because we know we have building repairs, and then the rest of it to revolving. Just so if there were road projects to come up later, we can always pull from revolving to put into road. But yeah, well, then I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Then. Do, yeah. do we have to pick a blind percentage and not knowing what the amount is and the impact on the budget? It's from the audit company. No. We need to allocate the surpluses. We just have to allocate. No, no, I get that. But, but, but right, right, right now we're trying to apply a blind percentage without any right. knowledge as to the dollar impact. We will, and and right. and the secondarily, what goes along with that is whether we're filling that hole. I guess you know. So my point is. If we felt felt that we needed, you know, another ten points more in the bill in the um, road fund, then to go to fifty, thirty, twenty, or fifty, twenty-five, twenty-five, but not knowing what the numbers are makes it a little hard to say. Right. I want I want to weight it one way or the other. I, I just don't I don't know that I've got enough great discussion. But I just don't know if there's enough information to make that. <laughs> well, so it, it, and it, it should have been allocated at the last, last meeting. meeting. Oh, okay. Before the end of the at year. The, at the end of the year. But it's still not too late to do it, but we should allocate We're it. Close. Okay. Either that or it's just all going to go into the, the general. general fund. Yeah. So. I mean, we could just allocate it all to revolving, but it this is, happens every year. Until we get our final revenue sharing check, yeah. which isn't until May, we really don't know what our surplus amount is. Well, so what would stop us from putting 100% in revolving and then moving the number once we know what the bogey is? We can do that. I'm, I'm just curious as to what would. Uh, yeah. I mean, is there a problem with that? No, there isn't. But yeah, I know it's an extra hoop. Well, just, just putting money it's into long-range planning. Yeah, has. and putting money into that fund just means that we're, you know, putting money in the fund. If we put, but we can move the money. Okay, we, we always can, but um, also too, you don't want to sit there with a revolving fund that's too high. No, but it would be how too high for how long? I mean, as soon as we know what the number is, we have the flexibility. Well, the, the, if you remove it, if you, I believe if you to reallocate it, then you have to do, open up the budget, and then you have to amend the budget again. And I don't know if that requires a public mm -hmm. hearing or not on a budget amendment. No, it's just that you have to do it at the end of the fiscal year, I think. Just like we did the other yeah, amendments. The, so but there would just be more amendments to, to put on that. So I'd like to see some additional funds put in the roadway Oh, for the dead trees and stuff like that. If, can you take that out of the road fund? Usually, usually right when away. we do 
we have right away funds that are that come to us from the state we started receiving those when we had our last census when we were over 10,000 population they allocated us right away funds when we do road projects um, for example when we put some of this gravel in on Harton Road we use road fund money to remove dead trees and trees in the right of way um, <laughs> you know by putting it in the road fund you're es essentially putting you know tree removal there you could also pull it out of um, fund. you can also pull that out of revolving fund so let's say we have a an area where a bunch of trees are we've noticed have died and they're gonna fall on the road or they start leaning we can always transfer money out of the revolving fund to cover those well it's like I've seen a number of dead trees on White Lake Road there's a couple standing near Den Hill there that have been blown right off and they're standing on the stump just waiting to fall one way or the other on Denton Hill and White Lake? On White Lake, just uh, east of Denton Hill. We're going to do some tree cut in that area this year. On Fenton Road, a couple over there on White Lake. So I well, guess if we're looking to allocate this money. It's something so we've always done in the past. Let's so think of it this way then, if, we're, if, we, if that's the path we want to go to. Would we allocate less than the percentages we've done in the past? In any one of those pots, I think we do 40, 30, 30. That's what we did last year. Yeah, but I mean, it's we can allocate whatever well, we I, feel necessary. So I, I just look at the road funding. I know we're going to spend probably 60, 80 grand on chloride, right. and we're doing a road project. I don't want to. We can't have a zero fund balance. So to me, it's like we need to incorporate some monies. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. fund up because we know we're going to be paying for chloride. I mean, would you would you be better with 33 33 33 or would you be better with 50 <laughs> 50 30 20 I, I know that's the what are you alluding to yeah well what I'm saying is it, if we have the flexibility to move the money out of the revolving fund right so why wouldn't we go I don't know weight it more heavily towards the revolving fund because you've got the greatest amount of flexibility to move it out when you need to so go 40 I mean, 30 30 yeah I guess that's fine okay. um, with the building fund though it's nice to keep keep a money going into there you know we know this building's aging we know this building yeah. has issues no, I, agree. I would rather be able to put a long-term strategic plan which i was trying to do mm -hmm. before we started this um and plan long-term plan for the residents so, you know things up the code they're not going to allow us to add on it's falling apart and then ask them for a millage for it I don't think that that's the right thing to do yeah no no I don't you know, strategic think so. planning managing our money looking for the future and put money aside you know a little chunk at a time for on the same token people residents have complained constantly about the roads I don't know how many uh, I get calls about sure where I live I get calls from the residents around the other roads I'm in the book, so they find me, uh, and I do get calls. So yeah, I'm all for, again, the roads are in dire need. The county, and the county's going to do so much for us now, mm -hmm. but that's all they're going to do. Yeah. Uh, we have, and Mike and yeah. Keith and I used to negotiate with them all the time. And we got a lot of, a lot of uh, I think we got considerably more than we were due by negotiating with them and, and squirreling and playing in. the game with them yeah that's basically it yeah. coming to the uh, table with but if you come to a poker game with no chips mm -hmm. you don't look at you quick <laughs> so again that that's why I think that that the 30 30 40 is very good for the township uh, it's worked in the past it's worked last year we had the money when, when we needed to uh, fix the center road. Yeah. And we have the money now that we can fix Fawcett Road. Next year we can do one of the other roads. There, there are several that are, you know, uppermost. And the only way we're going to do it is if we have the chips to play. If we, that's why if it's allocated to the road fund, then it's not in the slush fund. If it's in the slush fund, then we can get it out and use it for this, use it for that. Emergency comes out, we use it for that. Uh, this way, it's in the road fund, it's in the building fund, it's there. 
and that's what it's doing. Like te te our PEG fund, our PEG fund paid for the television, yeah. the communication thing. If we hadn't had the money and the thing come out, it would have come out of the slush fund. But because we had the PEG fund, it's there. It doesn't cost us anymore. The practical side is if we. How come you didn't say anything when he said slush? That's a revolving thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the rea so the reality is in, re in, in real dollars from practical and, and I don't disagree with you, Mike. I think we do have to take care of the building. You got to maintain it. You know, it's not. Sure. Yeah. Um, but so the, the reality and the math though works out that if you put 40, 30, 30, you've technically got 70 if you really had the opportunity to want to tap it to do something for the roads. That is to say, you could pull part of that out of the revolving fund. You still got the 40 set aside for the road fund. So I'm good with those percentages. Okay. I still think I'm... And we're still playing with figures. It's I, all we're doing. I still think I'm playing... I, I'm playing poker and I only get to see three of my cards. Yeah. But I, but I, I guess I have to live with that, so... <laughs> okay. That was a lot of work just to get back to where we started, but yeah. 40, 30, 30, but okay. Good discussion, though. Well, at least everybody brought the purpose and we all agree yep. that it's the three funds and there's yep. it's nice to know that we don't have all these other issues that we have to allocate five percent here two percent there ten percent here so it's not a slush fund what did you call it david revolving fund. Re revolving flexible spending flexible <laughs> spend. yes, there you go <laughs> okay all probably right. not the legal term i can tell you that right now hey. better than slush fund <laughs> so i'm just waiting for a motion you need a motion then to okay so move. some support Okay, so it's been motioned and supported to apply our budget adjustments 40% to the road fund, 30% to the building fund, and 30% to the revolving fund. Any further discussion? Flexible spending. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Next is to award the real estate service contract to sell the 74 acre parcel. We got some bids on that too. Not a bit tonight. Well, we received three bids on the real estate services. Uh, we received one from Thomas Duke Company and we received one from Greg Dean Real Estate and one from Ben Easley Real Estate. And the most recent realtor we've dealt with was Thomas Duke. And it was before my time because I've only been here since the 1st of March. But we had a really good experience with with this company and um, I they all are s telling us it's going to be six percent commission so there's no difference as um, far as the commission goes so I would recommend that we yeah, go with Thomas Duke yeah I, I do I do not know uh, of Greg Dean real estate Cam, do you know? He's, I know. He's local. I local. dealt with Mr. Dean in the past. He's a very nice gentleman, and uh, I have nothing but kind things to say about him. However, Mr. Porth from Thomas Duke did a phenomenal job for us on the other piece of property. At this point, I would like to, again, still stay with uh, supporting uh, David's motion. Actually, it's Marcy's. Or well, I don't know. I think it was actually a motion. It was a recommendation. Was a recommendation. Well, is there anybody that wants to speak in opposition of, of no. using no. Thomas Duke? No. Nobody. Then Marcy. I know these guys are well known. They're pretty well respected. Yeah. Marcy, make that motion. Okay. okay, I make a motion to select Thomas Duke Company to list our 74-acre parcel. Support. Okay, it's been motioned and supported to select Thomas Duke Company to sell our 74 acre parcel. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? 
Kevin Kruger. John Portion. Thomas Duke. Next item on the agenda is item number seven, request to opt out or in of the Senate Bill number seven, health insurance provision for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Okay, what this is, is there's a, a limit that public employers can um, spend on benefits for public employees. And I spoke with our insurance agent to get more information about the purpose of this bill because there's not a lot of detail on it. And apparently um, it was, they tried to pass it for the Mesa Teachers Union, but didn't have enough support. So then they brought in um, road commissions and townships yeah. and other local units of government to try to get it to pass. Um, per the insurance agent, the only entity that is required to abide by this Senate bill is road commissions. Mm -hmm. And most of the, the townships just opt out because because townships generally don't pay their employees a high salary, they compensate by providing better benefits. Right. So, so therefore, the the um, I don't know. Am, the, am I, I supposed to make well, a resolution? Well, or? No, well, no. Let me add a little. This came about after we had already been providing a benefit for our employees. Mm -hmm. This bill would force them to pay 20% of their insurance cost up front mm -hmm. and us to pay 80. We're, tr historically, we've been paying 100%. What we pay for insurance is um, fair compared to what other people are paying. Mm -hmm. So um, tr historically, we have just opted out of, the, out of the Senate bill to continue doing what we're doing. Um, I don't see any reason why we would change that. Yes. What is your opinion, Dave? I don't. Um, I agree. There's no reason to, to there's, a, there's hard caps and things like that in, but given the numbers we're talking about, this is not worth opting in on. So, so it's, say to it's opt out. a law saying you have to follow this, but you have an option to opt out. All so right, that you I, can I'm, I'm going to step out yeah, of the Yeah, but there are also some hard caps and things like that <laughs> in it that just, okay. yeah. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I'm, so, do we need a resolution on this? No. I move we opt out of Senate Bill Number 7, Health Insurance Provisions for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Second. Support. Oh, Soren seconded before I did. Okay. It's been motioned and supported to opt out of Senate Bill Number 7 for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Next. Wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a roll call. it's a resolution. It's a request. It, oh, but it has to be a resolution. It's a, it has to be done by resolution. Oh, oh you, you even asked resolve. that question. So we're going to have to go ahead and, and start all over. To resolve. To opt out. Okay. And we have support. Okay. It's been resolved and supported to opt out of Senate Bill Number 7, Health Insurance Provision for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Roll call vote, please. Mike Cunningham? Yes. Marcy Husted? Yes. Marna Smith? Yes. Cam Gonzalez? Yes. Soren Peterson? Yes. Chuck Schultz-Epson? David Walker? Yes. Okay. Motion carried. It's been resolved. Next, request of the treasurer to install a security camera in the treasurer's hallway. Okay. We have a Nest Cam camera. Uh, you have a, you have a, what? a Nest Cam. It's a camera with okay. Nest, Nest, dot com, Nest Cam, and I think we were only it was like a two hundred dollar cost. And then they have a ten day video storage that you can purchase for uh, one year subscription is a hundred dollars. Um, the purpose of having it in the hallway is for we're doing money transactions in Treasury Department. Okay. We're getting strong recommendations from the county on having some type of security in your office in the sense of, you know, do you have a panic button? Do you we have do. security cameras? Do you have a, a phone system set up that you can give a signal? Um, we don't really have 
much set up in a policy for sa safety to our staff if there was um, a situation. Do they not understand um, that we're a second amendment community? So <laughs> this is, it's just a, we have a device that's available to us and I thought let's put it to use and it's the issue that I had talking to legal counsel about it is the camera has a video audio feature and when I talked to legal counsel they had a real issue with the audio part I so agree. I did double check in the nest cam you can set the feature to be completely turn off the audio so it's only doing video so you have that feature on it so where exactly are you going to locate it in the hallway so if people are coming or going from Treasury, like from the front, I guess it's just in the hallway. It's not going to see them okay. entering the building. I thought about this, and I was just wondering. We have people that come in here with their pets and their children. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that camera be better served if it was in the office looking down well, over the cash and the, at the counter? About the fact is this Nest Cam, if we wanted to purchase more of the camera heads, you can have more than one. You could locate multiple cameras. You have to pay the $200. <laughs> but it will record, and you can have them in all the areas that you're allowed by law to have them, which that's why I provided all the documentation about privacy. I was thinking like in a retail store, a lot of retail stores have cameras to I mean, monitor. I just don't know if we need a whole. Yeah. So what's the purpose of the camera? Um, for staff safety and security, um, the county is indicating um, they're recommending a two-hour active shooter course for all Treasury departments in Livingston County. Let me ask you a different question. Mm -hmm. Who's monitoring this camera? It would be Tyrone Township through um, an annual service, which is like a cloud. Actually, not my question. Oh. So I walk in tomorrow when you have this camera turned on at 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Who sees me walk in? Um, Tyrone Township would have a login to... So you're just recording this? It's being recorded <coughs> under this cloud through Nestcam. So this is not going to... You know what this is going to do for an active shooter? Nothing. It's going to give not you a for picture an of it. This is just for security. Let's say someone comes in and steals the cash from the counter. You have a, a picture of them okay. to turn in to the you know he's call 91 told your sermon we you know someone came in stole our cash from our door you know, had a gun took our money and ran out well we have a picture of them that's held for 10 days on a video this video surveillance cloud storage is a 10-day storage and then you would have video of that Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that as long as you take the term safety out of this because I'm telling you, oh, this doesn't well, make us any safer. No, I, <laughs> I, I get the security side of this, but I'm telling you right now, all you're going to have is pictures of somebody who was a perpetrator. Right. No, this we're looking at <laughs> security and then I'm thinking of safety for down the road because we don't have any measures in place currently. Yeah, we but have I mean, no panic the, button. the only way no this becomes a safety issue is if it's monitored while it's, being, while it's well, active. Yeah, and you can. Yeah, absent of being monitored, all you you're going to have is photographs of a perpetrator. Though. Right. right. I'll say, uh, it's, I've seen the commercial on television about there's a robbery. You say, well, do something. I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. I just notify you there's a robbery. Right. Yeah, it's the cop so, in the bank that says, hey, I'm just yeah. monitoring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, you've seen that. <laughs> sure. I just don't want to have it. So people are so sensitive about their children being taped and videotaped and there's a lot of legislation about it mm -hmm. if we're going to videotape stick it in the back corner of the office so it's showing the counter that way if there's any kids there oh like where you know it's I mean? being placed at so it's yeah. not in the hallway i don't think that's really oh. an issue i mean i've worked i worked at a credit union i've worked i, worked I just at don't want it to be those people had kids in all the time mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, they, we can not, state at the front door. This building not, is video being surveillance. That's video fine. surveillance. I just wanted to make sure that, so that, that was not. And left you need unturned. to put it in the. The employees have to be notified of it too, huh? because yeah. it's going to be seeing them going up and down the hallway. Yeah. But uh, you know, yeah. uh, I guess one camera where the money is is not a bad deal. Yeah. No. But the idea is that we could use this one, and if we, like someone mentioned, well, if you're here, one inside, why aren't you doing the outside? Because there's va sometimes there's vandalism outside. I'm like. The cameras aren't made for outdoor, but you could 
Oh, he's getting oh. an additional one to be in the lobby that could go through the glass and see activity it's, outside. It, they're not vandalizing what doesn't already need to be fixed or repaired. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I think you're right. Yeah. From a, from a it's not for safety, but just for yeah, for security, I guess. Security for. Well, you put your, for, but you're at least at the very minimum as you're creating some evidence so that you might be able to track right. down and stuff. And it this. does have a, a indicator, like if you if we were closed and someone broke in, it sends um, email and text right away when there's a movement. It would notify. So, like if I was home and oh, someone broke okay. in in the evening, oh, I might be notified right yeah. then, and I could call nine one one, and they might catch them before they even get out of the building. <laughs> I don't know. Probably and not. Mouse leaves your office on the way to the break room. Yeah. You're going to get a buzz at 3 o'clock in the morning. He's just down the road. Yeah, I'll just jump yeah. in my hey, truck. Hey, Dave, go catch that guy. <laughs> Aside from the fact that I'm armed to the teeth down there. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah. So, but we do have the camera, and I thought it would be good to put it to use. Make your motion. All right, so my motion is to provide security camera in the Treasury Department. Which has already been purchased, correct? Correct. The, the item's already been purchased. Okay. Support. Oh. Any further? It's been motioned and supported to place the security camera that's already been purchased in the hallway. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Hope All right. Request of Lake Shannon Association for a fireworks display permit. I can handle this one. This is something that they do every year. We approve it. They go through the fire marshals. They obtain all their permits. So... I'll just go ahead and make a motion that we approve the request mm -hmm. over Lake Shannon. Support. Been motion and supported to approve the fireworks display permit for Lake Shannon. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Next, supervisors request to conserve lawsuit for an ordinance violation on Turner <coughs> Road. Um, most of you have uh, knowledge of, of this property. Those pictures are attached. The guy's basically got a salvage yard. Um, he started out scrapping. The scrap prices went down, and he just keeps amassing more and more and more, and it's way out of control. He has been sent several viol uh, violation letters. He's been issued a civil infraction over the last two years. Um, he, he said that he would have it cleaned up by the 14th of this month on the last letter. I told him if he didn't, we would pursue legal action. And 14th has come and gone and nothing's happened. Last week, our attorney sent him a reminder and a little bit more serious note that we were to pursue uh, legal action. And um, I think there's time to, time to so do it. So moved. Support. So motion and support it to approve the request of the supervisor to file a lawsuit against uh, residents on Turner Road. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Next is the request of the clerk to attend the MTA election class. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that Don't was easy. <laughs> Actually, now I'm going to stay a couple nights up there, too. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no you, you need to report that she attended. With all the elections going on? Well, it's elections, and it's... <laughs> and she's um, yeah. And it's... I mean, duh. Somebody yeah. give us a support. I did. I did. Okay. It's been well, motion and it. supported to <laughs> 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 approve the clerks. <laughs> <laughs> approve the clerks to attend the MTA election class. Any further discussion? All in favor? I'm sure we actually need this. Signify by saying aye. No. Aye. 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 Those I think opposed. It'll be helpful though. Okay. I don't disagree. Next is request to adopt the amendments to fully incorporate PCI planned commercial industrial into the zoning ordinance as recommended by the planning commission. Cam, you have the floor. Uh, we had several residents come come forth. They're oper they were operating businesses along US 23 mm -hmm. that were not compliant with the ordinance and or the planning uh, or the um, master plan. We have gotten together, and by the way, this is being reviewed tomorrow by the County Planning Commission to give us their final blessing on it. So, yeah. You know, this is something that we talked about during our master plan visioning session with our previous board, and I believe it was. Uh, uh, trustee Pites that brought it up. Why don't we just 
do the whole, whole thing. So uh, it has been in our, our, our master plan, and uh, it's we've got some lots there that are, are non-conforming that we needed to bring up to code. Um, what this is all about. Sure. So PCI is right. It gives us the flexibility to uh, utilize those uh, old US 23 corridor and US 23 corridor parcels for mm -hmm. what they need to be used for and uh, hopefully help bring some uh, expansion to the uh, flailing sewer system that we have. So now, this oh. looks like it's already been approved by Livingston County Department of Planning. It was. Okay. Uh, uh, the individual lots are being reviewed tomorrow. Okay. So, that's what so there's was. some that's individuals. All right. Yeah. No, okay. that was already been reviewed and approved by the uh, county okay. commission. Uh, make a motion that we uh, adopt the amendments to fully incorporate the PCI to be more compliant with the master plan. Support. Been motion and supported oh. to fully incorporate the PCI plan commercial industrial uh, into the ordinance. Further discussion. I don't think it's a resolution. It's a resolution too, Mike. Oh, it is? Okay. Mm -hmm. it says, so, okay. Sorry. just to clarify, so, okay. I just want to clarify under discussion. Lewis, can I just stop real quick and then, okay. okay. Will you amend your motion yes. to resolve? Resolved. Okay. And that's been supported. Let me restate it and then you can go. It's been resolved and supported to adopt the amendments to fully incorporate PCI plan commercial industrial into the zoning ordinance as recommended by the Planning Commission. Further discussion. Okay, further discussion, I just want to clarify all the changes in the language. These are all addition, this is just all additional information. We're not really changing anything in the ordinance we're not taking anything out no. that's existing we are we're adding all adding of this is new the, the PCI. Making okay. it clear clarifying a lot of the points that were in the old okay so this column is being added in this right. PCI yeah. column okay. our, our, Just planning, understand our that. planning commission did this in this this was a huge undertaking and we uh in less than a year I mean, we asked them to, we, the township initiated the action, they got in, they dug, yeah. they got it done, and they, excellent job. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, yep, that just clarifies what I a lot of wanted the, to make sure. Okay. And I do this give credit a lot of it to Mark Meisel, chairman. He is definitely the man for the job. Yep. So. so roll call or? May we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, David Walker? Yes. Chuck Schultz absent. Soren Peterson? Yeah. Cam Gonzalez? Yes. Marna Smith? Yes. Marcy Husted? Yes. Mike Cunningham? Yay. Okay. Next is request to adopt proposal section 21.57 to regulate outdoor furnaces as recommended by the Planning Commission. Again, this is something that we had yeah. uh, residents coming to the township requesting fire guidance and installation of these outdoor furnaces mm -hmm. and we worked and worked and worked matter of fact we've been working on this one since uh vanessa was here so we have um, come and the, the ordinances has the blessing of the uh, county planning commission they say it's one of the finest ones they, they read with a couple of uh, changes i Definitely, they had, that had been made, but there was actually it was one word they wanted it from. I think it was I can't think of it right now, but it was one word they changed in the whole ordinance that we made up. Wow. So that was very, very good, and uh, we now have, with your blessings, we will have an ordinance uh, regulating the outdoor furnaces, which is long overdue. According to some residents, I don't have one, so I can't. So can. they have to acquire a land use permit because yes. they're an out. Do they have to get approval at the county level? Is what I need to know. No, not the county. It has to be approved by our zoning administrator. Okay, so if it's, it's a, the same as uh, applying for land use for any. Because uh, usually when we issue a land use permit, it has something to do with building, and it, it goes to the county. But in this case, it will no. not. Okay, it will not because. Um, Okay, and that's the only question I had. I just wanted to clarify. I, I only had one question, too. Okay, that's your question. Okay. I didn't, I mean, <coughs> obviously it's a safety thing, but I was curious where the, the outdoor furnace shall be 
closer than 300 feet to any residents not served by the furnace. So meaning not a, to a neighbor. Mm. Like where does the 300 feet come from? Is that a, a manufacturer standard or is it a fire? It's like a manufacturer the fire chief? standard. I mean, okay. It's a manufacturer standard. Okay. Another, another yeah, co comment, a comment that I have when we do this let's include a fee for this i don't know that if a hundred dollar fee land use permit for an outdoor wood burner is appropriate well, we're not building again, a house. We, we couldn't do anything about that so right uh, well no and that, that's that. absolutely and that's why i bring it up now should this be a 25 dollar fee because it's just a clerical issue yeah. takes should it be a 50 dollar fee should it be well, we 100 do, like what 50 for windows and roof repair well, that, yeah, because that's a waiver. So, a waiver. yeah, okay. I, I just want to make sure that when we do this, maybe we should address the, or do we have to list that as a different agenda item? That's well, we already have our fee schedule, and the land use permits are already at a hundred dollars in our fee schedule. Well, can, so that's kind of a, so, okay. Well, you know what? Maybe let's put that on the agenda for next meeting yeah, is to discuss. So, so it's clean. Let's separate okay. it. I hate adding things onto a motion. So let's bring them. One thing I do like in here. You know, having asthma um, smoke, especially over this last weekend, is 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 can be burdensome. But it's also people's right to burn. Um, the addressing of the height of the smokestack, love it. As it gets it up from above the house, it gets it in the airflow, and it gets it gone. It just doesn't sit and linger. You see, a lot of people that have a stack like this, the smoke comes out and it just yeah. sits there. Dry. One of the because of existing fireplaces, which this does not include existing fireplaces. This is strictly for the outdoor furnace. Right. And well, well, they say one of the uh, the existing fireplaces are already, you know, a two-story house. They're way taller than this. Yeah, but this is totally something else. Right. It, it, they were done that way for a reason. <laughs> Once again, they're very stringent. Uh, they're, uh, I know this one took a little bit of time, but I like it. It's well done. <laughs> well, and it does indicate, you know, about nuisance, and then they have nuisance factors in addressed in here too, and that's due to the height Should, with absolutely. it. So they do sort of address if it is a nuisance. Yeah. All right. So this is just putting forth that we're going to adopt this as an ordinance. Then because yep. we've never had one. We've never had an outdoor furnace ordinance. Make a motion. And so it's a resolution, too. This resolution. will be a resolution. So resolved. Support. It's been resolved and supported to adopt the proposed, or uh, to adopt section 21.57 to regulate outdoor furnaces as recommended by the Planning Commission. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mike Cunningham? Absolutely, yes. Marcy Husted, yes. Marna Smith? Yes. Cam Gonzalez? Yes. Soren Peterson? Yes. David Walker? Yes. And Chuck Schultz, absent. All right, that resolution passes. There's no miscellaneous business. Public remarks. Don, you have the total floor. Disappointed. Gary Damone. In. Oh. In what? I have my reasons. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Don. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Support. Motioned and supported to adjourn the meeting. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? See. 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 <laughs> <coughs>